Hi everybody, hope you're all doing well. In this short lesson, I'm going to show you how to write a professional email introducing your company and your product or service. Welcome back to English for Professionals. I'm Derek and I'm here with another short lesson for you busy people. Before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new lesson. And now let's get started with the lesson. So imagine you have a lead, which is a person or organization that may be interested in your product or service. I'm going to show you how to write three professional emails. In the first email, we're following up on a lead after a short meeting in person. The second email is to follow up on the first email if you don't get a reply. And the third email is a final attempt or a last try. The third email is also known as a breakup email, which is the last email you send to a lead that hasn't responded. Before we look at the first email, I just want to say that the emails in this lesson are just examples. There are many different ways to write these kinds of emails. It really depends on your industry, what you're offering and your business culture. For my examples, I've chosen a formal style. This lesson is part one of two lessons on this topic. In part two, I'll show you some alternative ways to introduce your company and your service or product. And now let's take a look at the first email. The subject line is extremely important. You want to get the person's attention, but it shouldn't be too pushy or aggressive, and it definitely shouldn't be too long. Think carefully about your subject line and make sure it's relevant. Here are some examples for this first email. Pleasure chatting with you at, and then the name of the event. Following up on our chat at, and again the name of the event. Pleasure chatting with you, followed by the name of the person. This one is a little bit more personal. 15 minutes this week? or time for a quick chat? And one final example, quick question about and then include a topic the person cares about. It must be relevant to their business and how you can help. But again, be careful not to make it too long. For this email, I'm going to choose the first example we looked at. Pleasure chatting with you at, followed by the name of the event. And now let's start the email. Dear Mr. or Dear Miss, followed by the person's name, and then a clear and simple introduction with name, job, and company name. Then remind the person how and where you met. Then it's a good idea to thank the person for the conversation you had and to give the reason for your email. And now comes the introduction. Talk about your company's area of expertise and how you've helped other businesses in the industry. You could include more details here, but I would recommend not overdoing it. People are busy and don't have time to read long emails. My advice here is to keep it short. Follow your introduction with a polite request for an appointment. and then finish your email in a polite and friendly way. Great, so we've written our follow-up email and we've waited for a reply, but it hasn't come. Now it's time to write our second email. Let's take a look. For the second email, you can choose the same subject line or change it slightly and use one of the other examples from the first email. Make sure to keep it relevant and not to be too aggressive. This time use a shorter introduction and remind the person where you met. Refer to the first email you sent and remind the person about what your company does and offers. 
Don't use exactly the same words as in the first email, change it slightly and maybe mention the names of some of your existing clients. It could be very effective to add a link where the person can find out what your existing clients say about your products or services. Then finish the email with a polite request for an appointment and suggest a time. So we've written our second email and we've waited for a reply, but unfortunately we haven't got one. Now it's time to write our final email. Let's take a look. Again, the subject line is very important. Use a subject line here that shows it's your final attempt to engage with the lead. Here are two examples. Final follow-up or perhaps our timing is off, which means perhaps our timing is not correct at the moment, that the timing is not right. I'll go with the first one for this final email. Let's start with a friendly opener and then we refer to the previous emails. Show understanding and suggest why there has been no reply so far. Then give the person the opportunity to get in touch one last time and offer to stop contacting them if they are not interested. So that brings us to the end of another short lesson. I hope you found it helpful and I hope those emails can give you some ideas for how you can introduce your product or service in a professional way and help generate some income for your business. You'll find all of the emails and phrases listed in the description below. If you liked the lesson, hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already and join my email list. Every two weeks I send out my free vocabulary email with additional business English, words from the news and everyday English for you to learn. The link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.